Honest, thoughtful, courageous. That's how those who knew Stephen Sotloff describe him. The 31-year-old freelance journalist had traveled the world reporting for various publications. In Libya, he wrote an article for Time magazine, a first-hand account from the guards who witnessed the attack on the U.S. compound in Benghazi. He spoke with CNN about it in 2012. There was no protest. Um, they were armed with AK-47s, RPGs. They had uh, blast uh, demolitions, uh, you know, for uh, explosives for blast fishing. They had grenades. Sotloff loved journalism from an early age. He revitalized his high school newspaper, majored in journalism at the University of Central Florida. He grew up in South Florida with his parents and younger sister. Besides journalism, his other love was the Miami Heat. June last year, he tweeted, is it bad that I want to focus on Syria, but all I can think of is a heat finals repeat? After college, Sotloff began taking Arabic classes and writing freelance, sometimes taking chances. In Egypt, when a friend warned him not to meet with the Muslim Brotherhood, he went anyway, writing in the World Affairs Journal that he headed straight to the lair where he believed I would be devoured. In Syria, Sotloff's reporting focused on the human side of the conflict. Syrians displaced, waiting seven hours in line for a bag of pita bread. In 2012, Sotloff wrote, It's not bombs that are killing refugees. It is lack of medicine and proper sanitation. Even when he feared for his life, he kept on reporting. He was concerned that he had been on some kind of a list. Um, and this was about the time that ISIS first turned up, first started showing up. And he felt that he had angered some of the rebels, he didn't know which ones, by taking footage of a hospital in Aleppo that had been bombed. Stephen Sotloff was apparently looking to leave Syria soon, move home and attend graduate school. He told me he had one last story that he was working on. He didn't tell me what it was. And he said that this was kind of the end. He was a little bit tired of it all. Tired and perhaps something more. He had the same fear that, that all of us had working in Syria, the paranoia, the fear, um, the uncertainty. A friend fondly remembering him on Twitter wrote this, at a smoky cafe in Cairo, tapping on his keyboard, sharing contacts and smiling widely. The last time I saw Stephen, a wonderful soul. Rest in peace. Randy Kay, CNN, New York.